Hello, today we're going to look at the transition elements which are found here on the periodic table. Um, and in fact, it might be worth looking at just a few examples by looking at an actual periodic table. So we've got some familiar elements that are present there. These are all metals, remember. So we've got iron, copper, zinc, nickel you may have heard of, silver certainly. Um, other ones include tungsten you might have heard of, but platinum, gold and mercury are all sort of more com more familiar elements that you hear about in everyday life. Just to point out here actually that mercury is a metal that's liquid at room temperature so that's quite unusual and just highlighted titanium there. Okay but what we want to be really familiar with are these seven elements chromium, manganese, iron, cobalt, nickel, copper and zinc and relate what we're going to learn about the physical and chemical properties to those seven. These, one, these are examples that you might be given in an exam situation. So what we're going to do is compare the properties of the transition elements to group one elements. So remember they're all metals we're talking about here. Group one is listed there on the side just for a reference to remind ourselves. But we're going to compare the properties, physical properties and chemical properties of our transition metals. So in terms of the physical properties, what we mean are properties that you can see or observe. You don't have to have a chemical reaction to notice these properties. And there are several ones that we need to be aware of. First one is that in terms of our transition elements compared to group one, they are much harder and stronger than the elements or the metals that we find in group one. You'll remember that previously we saw that lithium could quite easily be cut by a knife along with other group one metals. The transition metals are also uh, much more dense or have a higher density than uh, group one metals. So if you remember we looked at lithium, you can see it there floating around on the surface in a ball shape, fizzing away and eventually disappearing as it reacts with the water. If you took something like copper, a transition element, and dropped it in the water, you would know that it would, or you'd notice and see that it would sink and it actually wouldn't react with the water at all. The next thing about these transition elements is that they have high melting and boiling points. So they generally have high melting and boiling points, higher in fact than group 1 metals, group 1 elements. There is one exception though that we have already mentioned and that is the metal called mercury. It's unusual in that it is liquid at room temperature. So it's not a solid, you'd find it as a liquid at room temperature. So that's mercury, it's one of the transition elements. Okay, so the next property we're going to look at is the idea that these transition elements ha are good conductors of heat and electricity. Um, all metals are good conductors of heat and electricity, but the transition metals tend to be particularly good. Again, if you look at something like copper, that's often used for the base of saucepan. So if you get an expensive saucepan or frying pan, but the base could be copper because it conducts and spreads the heat much better. And most electrical wires are made of copper as well because of its great conducting abilities. So let's look at some of the chemical properties of these transition elements. And the first one is that transition elements are much less reactive with oxygen. You remember that the group one elements we looked at reacted quite quickly and we can remind ourselves of that now. So on the left there we've got lithium and we could cut it and slice it quite easily with a knife and when you expose the metal it would very quickly within seconds react with the oxygen in the air and become tarnished. If we tried the same thing with iron which is a transition element you wouldn't be able to cut it very easily at all and in fact while it does react with oxygen in the air to rust it does take a much longer time and some of the transition elements won't react with oxygen in the air at all. The next chemical property is that they are less reactive with water. So if you put some iron in water, it would rust over a period of days and weeks, but most of those transition elements won't react with water at all. We also have a less of a reaction with chlorine. So we looked at the reactions of group one elements with oxygen, water and chlorine. And in fact, if we compare with transition elements, the transition elements are much less reactive with chlorine as well. You can get some of them to react with chlorine, but you have to heat to very, very high temperatures to make that reaction happen. So it's much less likely that you'll get a reaction with chlorine as well for these transition elements. We do also get the production of colored compounds. So when transition elements react with other elements, they make uh, quite characteristically colored compounds. 
The other thing to make a note of is that when these elements, transition elements, make ions, when they lose electrons, they can have ions with different charges with the same element. So one example is that of copper. We can have copper as an ion with a charge of 2 plus or with a charge of 3 plus. Remember, these metals always will have ions with a positive charge. So going back to this idea of colored compounds, depending on which ion of iron combines with oxygen, we have a different colored compound. So iron oxide with Fe2 plus would be green and with Fe3 plus it would be brown. So we could just make a note of those colors there. The key points being that they make colored compounds. Transition elements make colored compounds. The last uh, point I want to make is that transition elements are often used as what we call catalysts. So a catalyst is a substance that can speed up a chemical reaction. It doesn't get involved in the chemical reaction, but it can speed up chemical reactions and transition elements are often used for this purpose. There we go, and we can highlight that final point there. Okay, so transition elements, where they are on the periodic table and some of the physical and chemical properties of those elements, especially compared to group one elements.